Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org, and we just got back from CanJam Singapore, and we're rolling right into CanJam SoCal. Now, you might think I'm joking, but I am dead serious. These CanJams are back to back. CanJam SoCal is happening April 7th and April 8th, 2018, at the JW Marriott Los Angeles LA Live in the heart of downtown LA. We want to thank our CanJam SoCal 2018 sponsors, Sennheiser, Headphone Guru, and Hi5 Plus. Now, with so little time between shows to get this video done, we better get it started right now and show you a few of the amazing things you'll be able to hear and see at CanJam SoCal this year. As I've said in the last couple of CanJam preview videos, no other company in this industry, in my opinion, combines such a high level of audio engineering with such affordable pricing. In the years since Fio's emergence, they've literally reshaped the premium portable audio landscape with their level of performance for the price. Now, we've mentioned their Fio Q5 before, but it bears mentioning again. The Q5 is their new flagship Bluetooth and DSD-capable DAC and amplifier. The Q5 portable DAC amp combo can be fed via analog line in or digitally from USB, optical, coax, lightning, WM port, or Bluetooth with Aptex and AAC. I use it three different ways. As a DAC wired to my iPhone via the included lightning to micro USB cable, as a wireless DAC Bluetooth fed by my iPhone, and as a standard USB DAC from my computers. Now from the Q5, I'm usually driving a premium IEM like the Sennheiser IE800S from its balanced output. The Q5 uses two of AKM's AK4490EN DACs and can decode PCM up to 32384 and DSD up to DSD256. The Q5 sound to my ears manages to be very detailed and clean without any hint of sterility or artificial edge. When I pack ultralight, it's my current first DAC of choice. Theo told me they're also introducing a new balanced headphone amp module called the AM3B that has a 4.4 millimeter Pentacon balanced headphone output. I'm very excited about this as we at HeadFi HQ, we really hope to see Pentacon established as the balanced connection standard for both portable and desktop audio. FIO will also be showing their new FIO M7 high-resolution lossless audio player at CanJam. I haven't had a chance to hear this one yet. The FIO M7 uses the ESS Sabre 9018 QTC DAC to decode PCM up to 32384 and DSD up to DSD256. The M7 is also the first player from FIO to use Samsung's Exynos 7270 system on a chip with two ARM Cortex A53 cores. And very, very exciting to me is that the FIO M7 supports both Aptex HD and Sony's LDAC wireless audio codec, so it's fully equipped for high-res Bluetooth wireless connectivity. The M7 is at the top of my list of digital audio players to audition at CanJam SoCal. At CanJam Singapore last week, I actually did get to audition the upcoming quad driver FIO FH5 in-ear monitor. Now, I'm not sure where in the line the FH5 will sit, but I preferred it to their current flagship FIO F9 Pro IEM. I believe the FH5 uses one dynamic and three Knowles balanced armature drivers per side, and I'm definitely listening to the FH5 again at CanJam SoCal. Now, these are just a few examples of the broad family of products in FIO's portfolio. Set aside a good portion of your CanJam schedule for FIO's exhibit. Campfire Audio has been on a roll these last several years, releasing hit after hit. They've hardly been an overnight success, though. I've known Ken Ball from Campfire Audio for around 15 years now, and he did it right. He grew it organically. He grew it with hard work. They've also put a lot of effort into their research and development. For example, even though they already had solid audio measurement capabilities, they recently upgraded several key parts of their lab. They now use an audio precision audio analyzer similar to ours, as well as microphones and ear simulators from Gross. Actually, their measurement lab is quite similar to our state-of-the-art audio measurement facility here at HeadFi HQ, and Ken and I routinely share measurements back and forth. All that said, at CanJam SoCal, Campfire Audio will be unveiling two new in-ear monitors, the Comet and the Atlas. And as you can see, they look like nothing else I've seen on the market. These are gorgeous, uniquely styled IEMs. Both use solid stainless steel enclosures that are made using a state-of-the-art drop forge. Then they're CNC processed and then hand polished to a mirror finish. And both the Comet and the Atlas are made in Portland. Let's start with the Comet. The Comet uses a single, full-range, custom-balanced armature driver coupled with Campfire's tuned acoustic expansion chamber. It comes with a Copperlitz IEM cable with mic and inline controls, and the Campfire Audio Comet is priced at only $199. Listening to the Comet, I can't believe the big sound coming from only a single balanced armature per side. I'm struggling to think of any other single BA in-ear monitor I've heard that conveys the richness of tone that I'm hearing from the Comet. And until you get into some significantly more expensive multi-drivers, it's hard to achieve the sense of cohesion that a good single driver design projects. If you want even bigger sound from an in-ear monitor, it's hard to beat Campfire Audio's Vega, which has been a deservedly massive hit for Campfire Audio. But doing better than the Vega is exactly what Campfire's new Atlas is tasked with. The Campfire Audio Atlas is their new flagship, and like the Vega, what you get with it is big, powerful, engaging sound. 
The purpose of the Atlas, as with the Vega, is to give you the resolution and the physical presence of the voices and instruments you're listening to, but to exceed its Vega sibling in all respects. The Atlas has rich, densely layered tonality. If you want lean, look elsewhere. Inside, the Atlas uses a 10mm ADLC driver versus the Vega's 8.5mm such driver and an improved voice coil. Coming off the recent introduction of their first over-ear headphone, the Campfire Audio Cascade, the release of these two new IEMs from Campfire Audio at CanJam SoCal is still more exciting news from Campfire Audio. The Comet should be available for purchase starting at CanJam SoCal, and the Atlas is expected to be available for purchase around the end of April. Anyway, don't miss these and the rest of their line at CanJam SoCal 2018. Odyssey will be at CanJam with two new headphones, both of which I'm so excited about that I wasn't sure which one to start with here. Let's start with the Mobius. We did a whole episode of HeadFi TV about the Mobius very recently, so make sure to check it out if you haven't seen it already. The Mobius is, and I hate saying this, for all the preconceived notions these words will conjure, it's a gaming headset. But it really is so much more. First, it's an affordable Odyssey closed back planar magnetic headphone. It's active only, driven by a built-in balanced amp with up to one watt per channel output. It can be driven wired via a 3.5mm analog jack or using its built-in USB DAC via USB-C. It can also be used wirelessly as a Bluetooth headphone that supports LDAC for high-resolution wireless. The Mobius also offers amazing surround sound processing and decoding up to 7.1 and includes precise, fast head tracking built in. Now, the enhanced out-of-head imaging you get with the head tracking is actually quite incredible. Now, audio purists do not worry as the surround processing can be turned off. The Mobius is altogether very, very impressive. Definitely demo it with gaming or movie content if you can, but also just with plain old music at CanJam SoCal. The other new headphone Odyssey is introducing is this new flagship class model. This is the LCD 4Z. Yes, my fellow head fires, Odyssey still very much wants to make specialized products for the head fi diehards. This is definitely not a gaming headset. Now, the Z in the LCD 4Z's name refers to the impedance of this headphone, which is a lot lower than the normal LCD 4. I think the idea here with the lower impedance is to make LCD 4 level performance more accessible in terms of drive versatility. But there's another critical point in its favor, something that makes me want to hug it this headphone. While it's available with wood cups, similar to the LCD4 and other LCD models, it's also available like this, with a magnesium chassis much like the LCD MX4, which is much, much lighter than the normal LCD4. The LCD4Z in the magnesium chassis is a headphone I can wear for hours. Not a flyweight, it's still a heavier headphone, but well within my scrawny neck's limits. Now, the reason this means so much to me is because in terms of sound quality, the Odyssey LCD4 has been one of my favorite price no object over-ear headphones fast, impactful, resolving, visceral. But its heavy weight made it something I simply could not wear for more than a half hour at a time as it made my neck sore after a while. So anyways, I've been waiting for this. One other model I should mention is the Odyssey LCD2 Classic, also called the LCD2C. The LCD2C is essentially a reborn version of the original circa 2010 Odyssey LCD2. It includes the prephaser driver and it even has the staggered magnet structure that has only been used in the LCD2. Now the LCD2 Classic is appropriately named as it brings back the original LCD2's resolving sound with its unique brand of warmth and richness. Now bringing this classic sound back I think was a fantastic idea. Anyway, definitely make sure to listen to the LCD2C, the brand new LCD4Z, the technology-packed Mobius, and the rest of Odyssey's line at CanJam SoCal. I first heard this, the Ultrasone Edition 15, at last fall's Fuji Avic Tokyo Headphone Festival, and right away I knew I was listening to one of my favorite new over-ear headphones in the past year, maybe even longer. Now, I love the Open Back Edition 15's tonal balance. It has rich bass, warm but articulate mids, and a clear, airy treble that imparts no harshness or artificial edge. Nailing such a gorgeous tonal balance might be enough for some headphones, but the Ultrasone Edition 15 presents it all with a wide, richly layered, three-dimensional head stage that's airy but never overly diffuse. Its imaging is definitely one of its strengths. It seems Ultrasone's S-Logic EX platform just works extremely well with the Edition 15's newly designed open back chassis. Maybe it's the new velour ear pads too, because I also tried the optional leather ear pads on the Edition 15 in Japan, and hands down, the velour pads were better. The Edition 15's construction quality is impeccable. As Ultrasone does with all its premium headphones, no expense is spared with respect to the quality of construction and materials. It almost pains me to say this, but I think Ultrasone is only making 999 of these Edition 15s. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see this model eventually go down as a highly sought after classic headphone in the coming years. Anyway, make sure to hear the Ultrasone Edition 15 and the rest of the Ultrasone line at CanJam SoCal 2018. 
While I expect Hi-Fi Man to have their price no object electrostatic headphone system, the Shangri-La at CanJam SoCal, and you should definitely listen to it if they do have it there, I do want to instead move to the complete opposite side of their over-ear headphone line to focus on one of their most affordable models. I'm talking about this, the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. When I go to auto shows, I'm always excited to see the high six-figure and even seven-figure supercars I'll never actually be able to buy. What I find just as exciting, though, is looking at the cars I'd actually be willing and able to spring for. You get into those cars, you put your hands on the steering wheel, and you look around. If you dig what you see and feel, it's nice to think that a trip to the showroom might actually and realistically have one of these cars go home with me. Now, at a show like Can Jam, that would be the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. It's kind of like a very reasonably priced car that'll please you every time you park it out front and even more so when you get into it. It, one that'll perform and satisfy well beyond what you'd expect for what you paid. As full-size planar magnetic headphones go, the Sundara is very sensibly priced within reach of most head fires. Nevertheless, the Sundara elevates Hi-Fi Man's entry-level planar magnetic game. For the Sundara, Hi-Fi Man developed a new diaphragm that's 80% thinner than the HE400 series before it. The sound is both more lush and more detailed. It's also very lightweight for a planar magnetic headphone and very comfortable. Simply put, the Sundara is, in my opinion, the strongest value for the dollar product Hi-Fi Man has released since its founding. The Sundara is one of those headphones that many of us could happily live with as the one and only and with minimal harm to a head fire's budget. If you had to pick one thing to listen to at Hi-Fi Man's exhibit, make it the Sundara. Of course, if you have time, make sure to listen to the rest of their line too. Sonarworks will be at CanJam SoCal showing their TruFi app, which is a very groovy piece of software. Now, Sonarworks is best known in the pro studio world for their Reference 4 Studio Edition software. This software allows recording engineers to remove unwanted coloration from their studio monitor loudspeakers and their headphones. That is, it allows them to achieve a target flat reference sound signature in the studio and also to have that same flat reference sound signature with them on the headphones. Now, I was in a recording studio recently that was measurement calibrated using Sonarworks software. I was able to switch the Sonarworks corrected to tuning in and out in the studio. It made a huge difference. It even corrected for an obvious channel imbalance in the uncorrected studio control room. Anyway, Sonarworks' TruFi app is a very affordable consumer version of their technology and it allows you to instantly apply that same target, what Sonarworks calls studio reference sound, to any of 138 models of headphones that they've measured and offer their target compensations for. And that headphone database is growing, by the way. I think they intend to have 200 headphones measured and in that database by the end of the year. Obviously, the further away from the target the headphone is, the more dramatic the effect's going to be. And it's amazing how listenable TruFi can make some otherwise abysmal headphones. It's a fascinating demo and a very cool app that I do use with several of my headphones. Definitely make sure to stop by the Sonarworks exhibit at CanJam SoCal and give it a demo. We have several esteemed guests to give talks and participate in a discussion panel at CanJam SoCal that you do not want to miss. None of these sessions are repeated. Seating is limited, so schedule your CanJam days so that you don't miss any of them. Now, I'm very excited to tell you that Sean Olive, the Acoustic Research Fellow for Harmon International, he'll be coming to CanJam SoCal to present the research that he and his team have done regarding the preferred target response curve for in-ear headphones. I know a lot of you on Headfire are familiar with the research of Sean Olive and his team. I've seen Sean present several times, and he has a way of making all of their research accessible and easy to understand. Sean's talk will happen Saturday, April 7th, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. By the way, during his talk, Sean will also be discussing this. This is the AKG N5005 in-ear monitor. The AKG N5005 is the first headphone designed according to the new Harman in-ear target response, and you'll have a chance to hear their research then when you listen to Sean's AKG N5005. Again, that's Saturday, April 7th from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. From 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. on Saturday, April 7th, Dan Foley from Audio Precision and Alma International will present a talk titled why recording at sample rates well above 20 kilohertz is the only way to record music. In this talk, Dan will present the results of a study conducted at the Worcester Polytechnic Institute that shows many common acoustic instruments, including the voice, do produce ultrasonic energy out to 70 kilohertz and beyond. How these findings may impact the audio industry will also be discussed in regards to emerging high-resolution audio formats. I've seen this talk as well as Dan's measurements and data, and it's fascinating. From 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, April 7th, we'll have a discussion panel titled Audio Measurements with Audio Engineers. Our panel consists of engineers for whom audio measurements represent a part of day-to-day -day life. With audio enthusiasts increasingly interested in measurements, we'll explore with these audio engineers the role of measurements in their work and their research, as well as their feelings and findings about what audio measurements can and cannot tell us. This panel includes Sean Olive of Harman International, Dan Foley of Audio Precision and Alma International, Vince Ray of Brulin Care, and Paul Barton of PSB, and I'll be moderating this discussion. 
On Sunday, April 8th, from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., Mike Clasco from Menlo Scientific will present a talk titled, Parts is Parts, New Materials and Technologies for Better Sound from Earphones and Headphones. Most mainstream mid-priced headphones and earphones are constructed using HIPS or ABS plastics with PET or Mylar driver diaphragms and round wire copper voice coils. Yet there are now enhanced materials that are being trialed that will impact the next generations of earphones and headphones. Now at the last Alma Symposium, Mike showed me some very impressive examples and I'll be talking about this and more. Simply put, Mike Clasco will be talking about what we might expect to see on earphones and headphones at future Can Jams. Finally, on Sunday, April 8th, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., Paul Barton of PSB Speakers will present a keynote on how understanding the frequency response of headphones in relation to how speakers behave in listening rooms is critical to his industry-leading acoustic research and the development of room feel technology. This session will cover Paul's in-depth research and findings on target headphone curves and the innovation of room feel technology. Included in this session will be the explanation and results of informal blind listening tests done at the NRC, the National Research Council in Canada, with a group of headphone industry editors and reviewers. Deconi Audio is going to be exhibiting with us at CanJam SoCal, and when you stop by their exhibit, be sure to check out the Deconi Audio Blue. It's their new headphone created in collaboration with Fostex and based on the Fostex T50RP Mark III. Of course, along with the Blue, they'll also have their fantastic collection of replacement ear pads and ear tips, so stop by and see how their pads and tips can tune the sound of your favorite headphones and earphones. They'll even have a measurement setup so you can compare the differences that way too. What I'm most excited for at the Deconi Audio exhibit at CanJam SoCal is that they just announced that they now have replacement ear pads for the Focal flagship line, the Focal Elear, Utopia, Clear, and LX headphones. I definitely want to hear these ear pads on the flagship Focals. If you've got one of these Focals, be sure to stop by their exhibit and check them out at CanJam SoCal. I'll be doing that myself. SoCal-based Ultimate Ears will be joining us with their complete family of stage and studio-grade in-ear monitors. Their flagship UE18 Plus Pro is a significant improvement over the original 18 Pro. It has a presentation that's noticeably more spacious, natural, and lifelike. I think it's due to a completely redesigned crossover network and UE's True Tone drivers, which Ultimate Ears claims is flat to 18 kHz. The UE Pro Reference Remastered is the remaster of their first studio in-ear monitor, the Reference Monitor. Now that original Reference Monitor sounded to me like something that might measure flat, but the remastered sounds more like my personal definition of neutral, which takes into account room effect. To me then, the UE Pro Reference Remastered, in terms of tonal balance, is a significant improvement over the original Reference Monitor. Now we shot an entire episode of HeadFi TV about the remastered when it was released, so please do check it out. Anyway, make sure to check out these and the rest of UE's line at CanJam SoCal. Since we're going to be in their neck of the woods, it shouldn't be any surprise at all that Shit Audio will be exhibiting at CanJam SoCal. Now, Shit Audio has two outstanding new products that I'm actually having a hard time choosing between for the role of a small desktop DAC amp combo for one of my smallest desks at home. Now, these two new Shit Audio products I'm talking about that just launched a week or so ago are the Shit Audio Lear 3 and the Jotunheim Multibit. The Lear 3 is a fully discrete, current mode, non-inverting 6SN7 bipolar hybrid with constant transconductance output stage. The single-ended Lear 3 was designed to be suitable for driving just about everything, from sensitive IEMs to something like the Hi-Fi Man Susvara. With up to 4 watts RMS per channel into 50 ohms, 6 watts RMS into 32 ohms, and 9 watts RMS into 16 ohms. The Lear 3 is not based on the Lear 2's design, it's a completely new amp with two new technologies called Coherence and continuity, you can read about these technologies in Jason Stoddard's Shit Happened discussion thread in his dedicated forum area on HeadFi. Also, and this is big news, the Lear 3 now supports the same modules as the Jotunheim, so you can outfit it with a Shit Audio DAC module or a Phono Stage module. This Lear 3 is kitted with Shit's new multi-bit DAC module. Now, I am a tube amp enthusiast, and this latest tube hybrid from Shit Audio is very, very impressive. At the same time Shit Audio unveiled the Lear 3, they also introduced the Jotunheim Multibit. I already had the Jotunheim with the standard AK4490 DAC module and I was impressed by it. We shot an entire episode of HeadFi TV about it, so please look it up and watch it. Shit Audio also sent a second Jotunheim, this one with a new Multibit DAC module, and there's no question I prefer the sound of the Multibit module. It projects a richer sonic hologram with better, more cohesive imaging. Shit Audio also recently updated their flagship Yggdrasil multi-bit DAC with what they're calling the Analog 2 update. I believe this update has resulted in improvements to the Yggdrasil sound and measured performance. Based on impressions I've read, we just received this latest version of Yggdrasil and I haven't even had a chance to hear it myself yet. Ironically then, the first time I hear it might be at CanJam SoCal and I suggest you do the same. While you're there, make sure to also listen to the new Lear 3, the Jotunheim multi-bit, and the rest of Shit Audio's full line of products. 
For years, if you asked me what the best sounding IEMs in the world were, my answers were always custom fit IEM models. Over the last several years though, the sophistication of the universal fit IEMs has clearly evolved. That custom IEMs sound better than universal fits isn't as axiomatic as it once was. In fact, the two best in-ear monitors I've heard now happen to be universal fit only models. One of them is 64 Audio's Tia Forte. I've singled out the 64 Audio Tia Forte in the last couple of preview videos and deservedly so, conveying the resolution and balance that makes real things sound real is its strength. Few headphones of any form factor get me closer to the music than the Tia Forte. Again, to my ears, it simply does not put a foot wrong. If you can pick one IEM to listen to at 64 Audio's exhibit at CanJam SoCal, make it the 64 Audio Tia Forte. They'll also have their new models like the Tia Trio and the U12T and the rest of their line, so make sure to leave a lot of time in your CanJam schedule for 64 Audio's exhibit. In continuing a tradition that began with the very first CanJam SoCal in 2015, there will be a select group of exhibits in a quieter and less busy environment away from the main show floor just above the main hotel lobby. This year, the focus is on a trio of truly exceptional electrostatic headphone systems and other gear you definitely won't want to miss. When we think of the very best headphone rigs in the world, one system that's virtually assured of a top spot on that list is the Sennheiser HE1. Sennheiser's unparalleled $55,000 HE1 electrostatic headphone system will be available for listening sessions by appointment only in the Studio 4 room. Now, by the time you're watching this, it's very likely that all the time slots may already be reserved, but if you're interested, be sure to check the CanJam SoCal thread on HeadFi just in case, because if you can grab yourself an audition, you'll be glad you did. As I've said before, the HE1 is the best headphone system I've yet heard, and the number of people agreeing with that sentiment seems to increase with each and every audition. By the way, Sennheiser will also have an exhibit in the main show area, so don't miss that because there they're going to have the pre-production Sennheiser HD820, their highly anticipated closed-back reference class flagship headphone. The HD820 features some very unique engineering and design innovations, like the Gorilla Glass concave reflectors that direct the reflected sound to acoustic absorbers on the perimeter of the ear cup, and that's just one of its many innovations. I also want to mention that they'll have the Sennheiser HD630 VB at their main exhibit. This closed back headphone with adjustable base is starting to re-emerge and get more recognition, which I think it deserves on HeadFi's forums. I think the Sennheiser HD630 VB is sometimes under-recognized because its adjustable base might suggest something less than audiophile. You'd definitely be wrong to assume that though. So if you're in the market for a closed back around the ear headphone, audition the HD630 VB. They'll also have their new IE800S in-ear monitor. The single driver electrodynamic IE800S is a refinement of their popular IE800, offering a more sophisticated and polished sound than that of its predecessor. Since its release, the IE800S is one of the IEMs I keep with me at all times. Anyway, definitely make sure to visit Sennheiser in the main exhibit area and also in their Studio 4 room if you're lucky enough to snag a spot to hear the HE1. Also in the quieter area, in the Georgia One Room, Woo Audio and Stacks have teamed up along with Kimber Cable to create a world-class headphone rig of their own. Woo will be exhibiting their new ultra-high-end flagship electrostatic headphone amplifier, the Woo Audio 3ES. At CanJam New York, it was always occupied, so I still haven't heard the 3ES. I hope I can hear it at CanJam SoCal. In addition to the 3ES, Woo Audio will also be showing the rest of their lineup with a wide variety of headphones, including the MySphere headphone by Heinz Renner and Helmut Ryback, the men behind the legendary AKG K1000. The MySphere is a reinterpretation of several concepts that first debuted in the AKG K1000. From a brief demo of the MySphere at RMAF last fall, I can tell you that the imaging was phenomenal. Make sure to also hear Woo's flagship non-electrostatic amp, the WA33 with the Abyss Headphones AB12665 planar magnetic headphones. That is an incredible world-class cost no object system. Now alongside Woo, Stax will also be showing their entire lineup, including this, the Stax SRM-D10 driver unit. It's a rechargeable, battery-powered, portable electrostatic DAC amp combo. The SRM-D10's amp section drives any Stax Pro Bias headphone, and from it comes sound much bigger than its size might suggest. All of these systems in the Georgia One Room will be wired with the full range of Kimber Cable's power, data, signal, and Axios headphone cables. In the Georgia Two Room is SoCal's very own Mr. Speakers. Mr. Speakers is coming to CanJam SoCal with the final production version of this, their long-awaited electrostatic headphone, the Voce. The Voce is an electrostatic headphone that Mr. Speakers has been developing for years. It's an exciting entrant into the rarefied world of top-flight electrostatic headphones, and it firmly earns its place there. The Voce signature is definitely on the neutral side. I describe it as less bright than my Stax SR009 and less warm than my SR007 Mark II. At the show, the Voce will be driven by Headamp's Blue Hawaii electrostatic headphone amplifier.
Of course, the planar magnetic headphones that Mr. Speakers is so famous for will also be available for listening, including the Aeon and Ether families of planar magnetic headphones, driven by head amp headphone amplifiers like their GSX Mark II and their brand new Gilmore Light Mark II. This little Gilmore Light Mark II is a Class A headphone amp that draws from head amp's GSX Mark II. Its fully discrete amp section outputs up to 1.5 watts of pure Class A power, and it's priced at only $499. Anyway, now let's get back to the main exhibit area at CanJam SoCal 2018. Benchmark Media Systems will be joining us at CanJam SoCal and I'm excited as their Benchmark DAC 1 was one of the earlier outboard DACs I picked up many years ago. Now if you've also owned that DAC before and that was the only Benchmark product you've owned, then perhaps you'd associate what I felt was the DAC 1's brighter signature as some sort of Benchmark DAC house sound. It turns out that's not their house sound at all. Later on I picked up the Benchmark DAC 2 HGC and its highly resolving sound had no unnatural edge or harshness to my ears. I've actually always enjoyed the sound of the DAC 2. Benchmark more recently released the DAC3 HGC, upgrading the DAC chip from the ES9018 and the DAC2 to the ES9028 Pro. The DAC3 just arrived, so I haven't had a chance to directly compare it to the DAC2 HGC, but I can say for sure that like the DAC2, the DAC3 is highly resolving, natural, and engaging. I'm only a few days in, but I've really enjoyed it with sensitive IEMs, and yes, it's definitely quiet enough for those. And also with the new Odyssey LCD4Z, which it's also plenty capable of driving very well. Make sure to give the DAC3 HGC a listen at CanJam SoCal if you're looking for a new reference level DAC or a good relatively compact desktop DAC amp combo. The most exciting news to me though is that Benchmark just told me they'd be showing for the very first time at CanJam SoCal an upcoming headphone amp called the Benchmark HPA4, not to be mistaken with Fostex's DAC amp of the same name. What I'm excited about with this upcoming headphone amp is that it's based on the THX AAA headphone amp circuit. We've now measured a few variants of the THX AAA amp, and they're the lowest distortion, lowest noise amps we've ever measured. Here's a power spectral density measurement of the Mastrop THX AAA 789 compared to our Audio Precision APX 555 audio analyzer, and you can see the noise floor is literally just a hair higher than our APX 555s, and this is the quietest audio analyzer on the planet. In other words, it seems you may need the world's best audio analyzer, the APX555, to get the full measure of the THX AAA amps. I'm told the Benchmark HPA4 is based on the flagship AAA 888 dual mono circuit, so expect measurements at least as good as what I've just shown you. Now, if you're wondering if this kind of measured performance means clinical sound, think again. The AAA amps I've heard so far have been, like Benchmark's latest DACs, highly resolving, neutral, and yet smooth. By the way, you can see in this picture that they sent, it suggests there's a touch screen, and I want to find out what I can do on that screen. Anyway, stop by Benchmark's exhibit to check out the upcoming HPA4 and their DACs. And hearing this HPA4 is one of my top priorities. Shanling will be exhibiting at CanJam SoCal 2018. And at CanJam Singapore last week, they were showing something absolutely fascinating called the Shanling M0 that they'll also be showing at CanJam SoCal. The Shanling M0 is a very small, and I mean tiny, portable digital audio player with a touchscreen. The M0 is constructed of 7H tempered glass with a CNC all aluminum body and it measures only 45 millimeters by 40 millimeters by 13 and a half millimeters. Like I said, it's tiny. The LG touchscreen is only 1.54 inches square. And when seeing the Shanling M0, I can't help thinking of the old iPod Nano 6G. When it comes to audio capabilities though, the M0 should have it all over the old iPod Nano. For example, with its ESS 9218P audio chip, it can decode PCM up to 32384 and it has native DSD support. It'll output up to 80 milliwatts into 32 ohms and it has output impedance of only 0 0.16 ohm. Though it has no onboard memory, the M0 can, with a micro SD card slot, store up to 512 gigs of music. With bi-directional USB-C, the M0 can serve as a USB DAC with a PC and also as a USB transport for other DACs. It also has Bluetooth with support for Aptex and LDAC, and its 630 milliamp hour battery is, according to Shanling, able to provide up to 15 hours of battery life and 30 days sleep mode. The Shanling M0 only weighs 38 grams, or 1.34 ounces, and its MSRP is perhaps even more impressively low at only $99. I'll listen to the rest of their line at CanJam SoCal, but the M0 is my top priority at Shanling's exhibit. 
Ask me what the best sounding in-ear monitor I've ever heard is, regardless of form factor, custom or universal fit, regardless of price, and you're looking at my answer, the Shure KSE 1500. The Shure KSE 1500 is a full range electrostatic in-ear monitor system. Now imagine being able to take something like a Stax SR09 or a Mr. Speaker's Voce, these full-sized open back electrostatic headphones with all their virtually unparalleled resolving power. Imagine being able to listen to these inside an anechoic chamber, in silence removing ambient noise because that's rather what listening to the Shure KSE 1500 is like. To get full range electrostatic resolution and detail presented against the black backdrop of near silence is singularly unique. The KSE 1500 is to Shure what the Orpheus and HE1 are to Sennheiser, a no holds barred labor of love from a team of talented engineers that's passionate about music. Do not miss this at CanJam. Oh, and make sure to use the foam ear tips. Also, make sure not to miss the Shure SRH 1540. Why? Why listen to a headphone that's been out for well over four years? Because with the constant release of new products, we sometimes forget classics that are still competitive and impressive in their categories. The Shure SRH 1540 is one of those. Now, as Shure over-ears go, it has a warm, rich signature, a nice open soundstage for a closed-back headphone, and it's comfortable for days on my head. Anyway, make sure to hear the KSE 1500, the Shure SRH 1540, and the rest of the Shure line at CanJam SoCal 2018. JH Audio will be at CanJam SoCal with their entire selection of in-ear monitors, including several models from their very popular Siren Series IEMs. My favorite of the Siren Series line, actually my favorite JH Audio model period, is Lola. Now breaking from convention, Lola uses dual opposed electrodynamic drivers, not for the lows, but for the mid-band. This results in a uniquely lush, wet mid-range, and it's for this mid-range that the Lola is my personal recommendation as the most must-hear IEM at JH Audio's exhibit. Now all of JH Audio's models are available in both universal and custom custom fit packages, so listen to the JH Audio Lola and the rest of their line at JH Audio's exhibit at CanJam SoCal 2018. At CanJam SoCal, Meza Audio will be showing their new Meza Empyrean flagship planar magnetic headphone, which they co-developed with Renaro. The Empyrean was a big hit at CanJam Singapore last week, earning great feedback, which doesn't surprise me in the least. The Empyrean is a uniquely engineered headphone. Its diaphragm traces are divided into two distinct coil patterns. One is a spiral coil concentrated over the ear canal opening, and this spiral coil is more efficient at reproducing mid-range and high frequencies. Positioned physically above that, covering the upper part of the diaphragm, is a switchback coil pattern that's more efficient at producing lower frequencies. There are other distinctive components and designs in the Empyrean we don't have time to go over right now. Anyway, all of this engineering comes together to form a beautiful sounding flagship planar magnetic headphone. The Meza Audio Empyrean is definitely one of the can't miss headphones at CanJam SoCal. Meza Audio will also be showing a prototype of a new premium universal fit IEM called the Rye Penta. In each fully CNC sculpted chassis are five drivers, two dual balanced armatures and one electrodynamic driver. Meza is aiming for a reference class balanced sound signature with natural tonality. The Rye Penta was also well received at CanJam Singapore last week. Anyway, make sure not to miss the Empyrean, the Rye Penta and the rest of the product line at Meza Audio's exhibit. Empire Ears will be showing two new lines of IEMs with seven new models. The two new lines are the EP line and the X series. The EP line will consist of three multiple balanced armature IEMs. The X series line will have four dynamic and balanced armature hybrid IEMs. We had a couple of the new models here at the office for just a short time recently and we were very impressed by both. Now I didn't have the time to hear the rest of their line at CanJam Singapore last week, but I do intend to do so at CanJam SoCal. NAD Electronics and PSB will be exhibiting at CanJam SoCal under their parent company, Lenbrook, and they'll be featuring two new over-ear headphones engineered and voiced by legendary loudspeaker designer Paul Barton. Now, both of these new headphones use Paul Barton's RoomFeel technology. RoomFeel is based on the premise that headphones should sound like a pair of flat-measuring, full-range loudspeakers properly set up in a good room. Paul will be discussing his RoomFeel research in one of the CanJam SoCal seminars, so check the schedule and don't miss it. This is the new NAD Viso HP70. The Viso HP70 can be used both wired and wirelessly via Bluetooth, including Aptex HD. I'm excited about Aptex HD for Bluetooth headphones. The Viso HP70 has three modes of operation, passive, active, and active with active noise cancellation. It's in its active modes that room feel is optimized, and it may be in this headphone and its PSB M4U8 sibling that room feel has sounded most natural to me. The PSB M4U8 is the Viso HP70's fraternal twin, so there's an unmistakably familial sound. They've got the same father in Paul Barton. Now, one of the few differences is that this headphone, the M4U8, is a bit heavier than the Viso HP70 and obviously has different styling. 
This is the PSB M4U TW1, the TW standing for true wireless, meaning no wires between the earpieces. These earphones are good for about five hours of playtime per charge, and while the truly wireless category is still fledgling, the M4U TW1 has sound quality at or near the top of all products I've heard in this category so far. Now the M4U TW1 sounds like a headphone Paul Barton tuned, and that's a good thing. Anyway, make sure to visit Lenbrook's exhibit to check out the entire line, including the PSB M4U TW1, but especially to hear your room feel better implemented than ever before in the NAD Viso HP70 and PSB M4U8. You've heard me mention exhibits before that I've described as being so packed with a variety of audio gear from a slew of different manufacturers that they practically constitute mini audio shows of their own. This may be more true of two exhibitors at CanJam SoCal than any others, the Source AV and Moon Audio. The Source AV, also known as TSAV, is based in SoCal, and if you look at this list of gear they submitted for the show, You'll see it would be impossible for me to go over much of it here, so let's pick a couple of highlights. The Source AV will have one of the most interesting upcoming new IEMs I've seen in a while, the AAW and Shozi Pola, a collaborative project between AAW and Shozi. What makes the Pola so interesting is that it's what they're calling the world's first electrostatic hybrid IEM with internal amplifier and interchangeable cable system. I had a chance to audition it at CanJam Singapore last week, and I was very impressed, especially considering that it's expected to come in at a pretty reasonable price. Now, I believe they said they were still working on refining the tuning further, but they've done a nice job with the cohesiveness between the two driver types already. I would say this AAW and Shozi Pola IEM is one of the must-hear items at TSAV's exhibit, as right now you'd probably otherwise have to go to Asia for a chance. TSAV will also have the desktop cord electronics components like the Cord Dave, still our ultimate reference stack here at HeadFi HQ, and the Cord Blue Mark II M Scaler with its million tap digital filter. This combo represents the single best digital source I've ever heard. And by the way, Cord Electronics will have their own CanJam exhibit also. Another highlight of countless highlights at TSAV's exhibit will be the Sim Audio Moon 430 HAD. Especially when it comes to driving full-size headphones of medium to low sensitivity, the Sim Audio 430 HAD has to be one of the most capable, beautiful sounding, balanced, solid state amps currently available. The 430 HAD's discrete transconductance amp circuit will drive 667 milliwatts into 600 ohms and a full 8 watts into 50 ohms. And it's not just powerful, it has beautiful tone. Moon Audio will also have an amazing array of gear at their exhibit. Look at their gear list. Again, there's no way we can cover all this here, so here are a few highlights. While Ultrasone will have their own exhibit, Moon Audio will also have the fantastic new Ultrasone Edition 15 and will likely have a greater variety of gear to drive it from. Now, one of the amps I have not had a chance to try the Ultrasone Edition 15 from yet, but that I'd love to try it with, is the Dragon Inspire HPA1 tube headphone amp and preamp. This amp was designed by Drew Baird of Moon Audio and Dennis Had, the founder of Carry Audio. Now, while it isn't an inexpensive amp, the Dragon Inspire HPA1 gives top flight classic carry type tube sound at a comparatively reasonable price. It's a gorgeous sounding amp. One of my favorite things about Moon Audio is how they've made my day-to-day -day life as a head fire more convenient. In addition to our CanJam events around the world, I also go to a lot of other audio shows. In short, I end up wanting to plug a lot of different things into a lot of different other things. Now right now, the 64 Audio Tia Forte is using a 2.5mm balanced termination. But what if I wanted to plug it into an amp whose only balanced connection is a 4-pin XLR? I just grabbed this 2.5mm to 4-pin XLR adapter by Moon Audio. 2.5mm balance to quarter inch single ended? Yep. Dream up just about any plausible connection combo and the occasional implausible ones, and Moon Audio probably already has an adapter for it or can custom make you one. Now we're going to shoot a short video soon about my EDC and CanJam pack lists, and Moon Audio will figure prominently in that. Moon Audio will also be showing the latest versions of their copper cable with heavy silver plating, the Black Dragon, their pure silver Silver Dragon cables, and a brand new copper cable called the Bronze Dragon. I also especially love their latest generation 2-pin connector for IEMs. Its custom plastic injection overmolds are more durable and they also angle back for a more ergonomic fit and with less strain on the pins. Both the Source AV and Moon Audio do have some product crossover. For example, both carry products from Sony, Focal, Sennheiser, and others. But their different overall product mixes mean different rig combos can be auditioned. At both TSAV and Moon Audio, you can literally spend hours of your CanJam time just mixing and matching gobs of different gear. At CanJam SoCal, go to the Brainwaves exhibit, listen to their new flagship Brainwaves B400 quad balanced armature in-ear monitor, and then ask how much it retails for. When they told me last week at CanJam Singapore, I was shocked. Now the B400's sophisticated, resolving, and very well-balanced sound signature is something few companies are offering at or near this price range. Before you spend more on another IEM, at least audition the B400 first. 
Brainwaves also makes several other value-priced IEMs, headphones, and accessories, so make sure to check it all out at their exhibit at CanJam. At CanJam, Audio Technical will be showing off its new flagship over-ear headphone, the ATH ADX 5000, and wow, what a beautiful sounding headphone this is. Arguably the best sounding headphone Audio Technica has made. I personally think it's their best headphone to date, period. Now the Audio Technica ADX 5000 is a flagship class open back electrodynamic headphone. I feel it competes with the best such headphones from the likes of Sennheiser, Focal, Biodynamic, and others. The ATH ADX 5000 uses large 58mm electrodynamic drivers, the diaphragms of which are tungsten coated for improved rigidity, and they're mounted within a new integrated driver unit design that minimizes unwanted vibration and resonances. Its sound signature is extremely airy, but with solid images within that. Its tonal balance is a bit brighter than I usually go for, yet it's smooth enough for me to have absolutely fallen in love with it as I do value smooth, organic detail, which it has plenty of. The ADX 5000's bass is fast, with just enough weight and extension to satisfy me, especially for an open back headphone, enough that I've not found myself wanting for more bass when I'm listening to it. And while I wouldn't mistake the ADX 5000 for my Stax SR009, its fast, airy, resolving signature does remind me of a good electrostat. Another thing I love about this headphone is that it's light and weight at only 270 grams and it feels like it weighs next to nothing on my head. The frame and arm are made of magnesium, which certainly helps. Handcrafted in Japan, this headphone is also one of the most elegant, attractive headphone designs on the market today, in my opinion. So Audio-Technica, great job with the ATH ADX 5000 all around. Audio-Technica will also be showing off its Aptex HD-enabled wireless headphones that use Audio-Technica's pure digital drive system, which bypasses the need for standard digital to analog conversion. Their wireless flagship ATH DSR9BT remains one of the most wired audiophile sounding Bluetooth over-ear headphones I've yet heard. Anyway, make sure to visit Audio-Technica's exhibit at CanJam SoCal to listen to their Aptex HD wireless headphones and the rest of their line, but most of all, be absolutely sure to listen to their wonderful new flagship ATH ADX 5000. Well, that was a lot of gear to cram into this video in the short time we had to do it, but that's still just a taste of what you'll be able to hear and see at CanJam SoCal, which is happening April 7th and 8th, 2018, at the JW Marriott Los Angeles LA Live. Now, since we have a flight to catch and didn't have the time to show you everything, scrolling on your screen now is a list of all the companies who will be exhibiting at CanJam SoCal this year. For those of you attending, I can't wait to see you there. And for those of you who can't make it, we'll see you on the forums.